Other examples of Henry's weakness uh, lay in his choice of counsellors. Henry favoured low-born, uh, unpopular men like William de la Pole, Earl and later Duke of Suffolk, and Sir James Fiennes, who he created Lord Say and Seal in 1447, over the traditional uh, mag uh, nobles, who should have been, by right and by virtue of their birth, the king's natural counsellors. The king's favour shown to the Beauforts, his illegitimate cousins, also weakened the uh, polity, and especially caused a rift between the Beauforts, on the one hand, and his uncle, Humphrey, Duke of Gloucester. By the early 1440s, Gloucester's role in politics had been marginalised. In 1441, his wife, Eleanor Cobham, was arrested and accused of witchcraft, and Gloucester himself very much excluded from the king's councils. In 1447, at the Parliament which met at Bury St Edmunds in February of that year, Gloucester mysteriously died. Uh, there were accusations flying around very soon afterwards that, of course, he had been murdered by the king's evil counsellors. Henry's lack of leadership in this regard, Henry's lack uh, of a or failure to give a clear statement as to Gloucester's fate was seen by contemporaries as a fundamental uh, failure of kingship. The crisis for the Lancastrian crown came in 1450. In 1449, the French king, Charles VII, had launched a major offensive which, in the space of a year, cap recaptured all those conquests in Normandy made by Henry V in 1450. 19 to 1422. The blame for the loss of Normandy was laid squarely at the feet of the king's evil counsellors, principally William de la Pole, Duke of Suffolk. In the Parliament which met in November 1449, Suffolk was attainted and sent into exile. Suffolk was actually murdered just off the coast of Dover on his way into exile, uh, a clear example, I think, of the, of the deep unpopularity and the deep sense of shame which was felt by the loss of Normandy. Henry's reaction to Suffolk's murder was, of course, to threaten uh, the commons of Kent, and this was one of the uh, reasons behind Cade's rebellion in July 1450. In the summer of 1450, the commons of Kent led by a mysterious figure, Jack Cade, rose in rebellion and marched on London, demanding justice, uh, the removal of the king's evil counsellors, and the return of the Duke of York and other noblemen to Henry's council. Henry's reaction to Cade's rebellion was again ambivalent. He appears to have deserted uh, Lord Say and several other members of his council who were seized by the rebels and murdered. But then, bolstered I think by the Duke of Somerset, he uh, showed some resolve and attempted to stand up to the rebels. One of the demands made by Cade's rebels, of course, was the return from Ireland by uh, Richard, Duke of York. Richard, Duke of York emerges from 1450 as one of the key figures, uh, and of course it's York, uh, who spawns the party, the Yorkists, who eventually capture the throne in 1461. York had himself a claim to the throne through his mother, who was uh, descended from Lionel of Antwerp, Edward III's second son, and from his father, who was descended from Edmund, Duke of York, uh, who was Edward III's fourth son. So in many ways, York's claim to the throne was better than that of Henry VI himself. York had fallen out with Somerset and with other members of the King's councils in 1443, when he had been passed over uh, for command of an expedition to Gascony. So the 1440s were a period of political exile for York, in which his uh, antipathy towards the Lancastrian regime Grew. There was little that York could do, though, while Henry VI was still uh, active as king. In 1452, he tried an armed rebellion to try and get uh, Somerset removed from the, from the king's council, but this failed. York's moment came in 1453. In that year, the last English possession 
on the continental mainland of France, Gascony, uh, was lost. This terrible news sent Henry VI into a catatonic stupor, uh, where for several months he neither spoke uh, to anybody nor uh, acted any of the normal functions of a king. York, at this point, was appointed uh, protector of the realm. In January 1455, Henry uh, recovered just as quickly uh, as he'd lost his faculties 18 months or so earlier. York was again excluded from uh, the king's councils, and Somerset was again resurgent. In, this, in May 1455, uh, York tried to stop Henry VI and Somerset from attending a meeting of the Great Council at Leicester. The two sides met at St Albans in what was the first battle of the Wars of the Roses. Henry VI was uh, injured and Somerset, of course, was killed. From this time onwards, the armed conflict between the houses of York uh, and Lancaster, I think, can be traced. The tensions and the hatred uh, created by the events at St Albans really were never put to rest. The murder of Somerset, the murder of the Percy Earl of Northumberland, the murder of Lord Clifford by the Yorkists began uh, or engendered blood feuds which coloured English politics throughout the late 1450s. After the death of Somerset, Henry's queen, Margaret of Anjou, emerged as the leader of the anti-York faction. And despite the Love Day of 1458, when there was a public reconciliation between the lords who had, uh, whose, whose fathers had murdered each other uh, at St Albans, this bad feeling never really uh, disappeared. In 1459, York and his followers, the Earls of Salisbury uh, and Warwick, were attainted in Parliament and fled into exile. From this point onwards, there was really no, no uh, settlement of the Wars of the Roses which would not end in bloodshed. Either York would be killed or Henry VI removed as king. In the Parliament of 1460, uh, Richard, Duke of York, lay, made his formal claim to the throne. This shocked even his most uh, loyal supporters, and the compromise was reached that York's son, the Earl of Rutland, would be heir to the throne rather than Henry VI's own son, the Prince of Wales. Later that month at Wakefield, the Lancastrians ambushed Richard, Duke of York, at his castle near Wakefield, and York, his son, Rutland and the Earl of Salisbury were killed. In conclusion, I think we can say there was nothing inevitable about the Wars of the Roses. There was nothing inevitable uh, that led to the conflict between the houses of Lancaster and York. There were no institutional, nor structural problems inherent in the late medieval English monarchy that made war inevitable. At the end of the day, it seems to me that the origins of the Wars of the Roses lay in the ambitions and personalities of the principal actors. First of all, there would have been no Wars of the Roses had Henry VI been a more active and more able king. It was Henry's lack of leadership, his failure to exercise even the most fundamental duties of king in terms of patronage, in terms of politics, in terms of royal government, that made his kingship, in the end, untenable. That said, it took 40 years for Henry to be removed as king, and by the time Henry was 15 or 16, it was clear, his shortcomings were clear. The other factor that led to the wars between Lancaster and York, and led to the Yorkist dynasty coming to the throne in 1461, was, of course, the ambition of Richard, Duke of York. It was York's claim to the throne in 1460 and his ambition and belief that he could do a better job than Henry VI that, at the end of the day, must be responsible primarily for the Wars of the Roses.